Last week, Kid Robot released their Gold Life Dunnies, all of them by Huck G. To promote his new set, G visited three Kid Robot stores around the country. Lucky for us, the Miami Kid Robot store was one of those three. Christina and I stopped by to see what was going on and to talk to a few of the folks over there. Okay, I am here with a wonderful person that works at the Kid Robot store and is an avid collector. What is your name? Byron. Byron. And um, we are actually, we're at the Huggy artist signing and the release for Gold Life. So we're really excited. Do I look excited? I'm pretty excited. <laughs> so we wanted to ask Byron a few questions since you work here, so you're into vinyl. Absolutely. And have you been a collector for a long time? Well, actually, I started collecting about seven years ago. So in some terminology, that wouldn't be considered too long, and in others, it would be. So. But still, se seven years, is that's dedication. That's, you know, a long time to be into a hobby. Yeah, I think that the dedication part comes of it is more with keeping up with it because, um, you know, the, obviously whenever your collection starts getting a, to a certain size, it becomes, you know, harder and harder to add to that collection. Yeah, it becomes this issue of space and then picking and choosing specific pieces and artists or something that you like. Okay, um, are there any artists that you like more than others? Um, yeah, definitely, you know, a lot of it has to do with the style and specifically what they, what kind of toys they make. You know, Hug G is definitely one of my favorite just because of the Asian influence that he uses as well as the different themes that he tries to, you know, he tries to keep a consistency with it and when you see consistency you actually can see their style develop you know um, Frank Kozik I think Frank Kozik was definitely another one of my favorites just because his style is very easy to understand you know he juxtaposes cute and bad so yeah his pieces are hilarious I, I they always make me smile yeah right on um, Amanda Vassell has some cool like you know from the she uses those mid-century kind of designs and yeah, it's actually and attractive because yeah you know and it looks like it's made out of wood but when you really get to it it's plastic you know but yeah. You know, they all kind of have their signature style, so that's cool. That's cool. So there you have it. You've got one avid vinyl fan and his opinion. And we'll be asking around more around the cool. store. Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Yes. Okay. Now I'm here with Samantha. Samantha is the assistant manager at the Kid Robot Miami store, and she's been working here since it opened. So she's been here for almost four years, it was. So tell me a little bit about yourself and if you were into vinyl before you applied to the store or anything. Um, well, I was really into vinyl before. Um, I had heard about like the Kid Robot store opening through Craigslist. I was kind of scanning it, looking for different jobs and everything. So I had gotten into it um, from going to Tate's up in Fort Lauderdale. And I was introduced to Kid Robot through the money figure. Um, one of my fr good friends, he does graffiti, so I just bought him like a black money figure. I think it was Series 2 or something like that. And um, that's how I kind of got into the whole thing and like loved how the black boxes were and like all the different artists and I was like really big into the graffiti like scene and like Faffy and stuff and she's like a girl graffiti artist so I just wanted to get a job here and I was like so excited when I got interviewed. <laughs> That's cool. So then working here, you've ended up meeting a lot of the artists, I would imagine, since the ones that tour around. Um, have any stood out to you in particular in your time here? Um, probably Huck G, who's here now. Uh, he was the first artist that came for our opening, for the grand opening. He was here uh, for his little three-inch skull head, Johnny, and they did like a, a separate colorway for Miami. They only made 305 of them. So that was like, yeah. <laughs> So that was right, really cool. He was like the first artist that I met and um, it was really awesome. We were at the register here and he was like sitting on a mega money box next to me because we didn't have any chairs or like nothing kind of set up for it. So he was like doing the signing and I was bringing people up like sweating under the hot lights. Um, so Hawk is like super uh, like memorable impression on me and Dave White. He came here for um, the Kid Robot uh, Kid Sergeant signing that we had and he's just a super super funny guy like awesome humble dude so he's one of my cool and um, do you have any favorite artists like as far as design go aside from Frank and Huck? Um, I like Amanda Vassell stuff a lot like her artwork translates very very well to the vinyl and it's just like not lost in that kind of like from 2D to 3D so I like her characters and just the way that her art looks and um, I like Devil Robots a lot, the tofu head, really awesome. Very so. <laughs> 
being collectors ourselves, we couldn't resist picking something up and opening it right away. Oh, so I have a bag because I couldn't resist the uh, kabuki and kitsune to the two sets. Oh, you can see them because they're closed into this box that's freedom. Oh, you've got an unboxing within a Tomo Pop About Town. That's incredible, isn't it? Now, what I'm doing here. It's probably not what I'm supposed to do. I heard there's a way to open these boxes. I don't know that way. I'm just opening. I'm trying to not destroy the box. There was an artist signing today. Okay. And here they are. They are adorable. And uh, this kitchen has a little bow in the back. Mr. Kabuki has this whole little boku set on. Very cute. They'll look better when they're out of the packaging, but. While we were there, we talked to a few of the customers that were there for the signing. Okay, now I'm speaking with Jen. Uh, she came here for the signing, right? And uh, we're looking at this very interesting figure over here, which is uh, seems to be quite an old figure. Yeah, old piece. So um, I heard there's a good story behind this piece. Can you share? Well, basically, I work at, at an advertising agency, and somebody was leaving the company or moving to a different office, and they left this piece to someone who doesn't collect toys but knows that I do. So they're like, hey, Jen, they left this for me. It doesn't mean anything to me. Do you want this? And I'm like, yeah, I want this. And they have no idea what they just gave me. So that was a beautiful story, and now it was worth Enough, you know, a lot without him signing it, but now that he's signed it, it's worth even more, so... Not that I plan on selling it, but... That's great, though. I mean, you've got... You've got quite... you got something to brag about. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. So how long have you been collecting vinyl? <laughs> um, I want to say maybe, like, 10 years. Another dedicated person over here. 10 years. Maybe a little less. But for a while. And what what was your um your gateway figure? Like what got you into it? My my best friend at the time actually introduced them to me and I was super into art already. And it's not hard to be into toys. So you mix art and toys and I don't know. So I have a pretty large collection. That's great. There's a lot of money on those shelves. <laughs> um now I'm chatting with uh, what are your names? Jay. Elliot and Elliot, uh, we we stopped you guys because we saw you. Is that your bin of yeah. goodies? Is this a regular thing for you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's that's the regular. usual yeah. thing. Uh, that's what it was three weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> so you just started collecting um, vinyl recently, or have you been into it for a while? I want to buy. He's been into it for a while. I've been doing it for about three years. Okay. I just got her into it. I just got into it. Okay, so you're on a shopping spree. Yeah. yeah. Of, of sorts. <laughs> of sorts. Yeah. Did you also come for the signing or you just happened to be here today? No, no, no. I came for the signing. Okay. So, um, tell me, do you have any particular artists that you're more fond of than others so far? I really like his stuff. Um, I like Mad stuff a lot. Those are probably my two favorites. I like Chuck Boy stuff, but yeah. Are there any that stood out to you uh, as uh, being introduced into vinyl? I haven't chosen a favorite one yet. I do like Hug, hug stuff though. That's cool. When the event was over, Hukaji spoke to us about the Gold Life Dunnies, his influences in general, and his opinions about the overall state of the vinyl industry. Now I'm with like the superstar of today. <laughs> Okay, I'm with Huck G. 
Is that, that's how I pronounce yeah, it, right? Yeah, you got okay. it. Okay, um, the event is over. That's why it's so nice and quiet in the background. And um, it's 8 o'clock now. I heard people were lining up for you at 3.30 in the afternoon today. That's not bad. That's not bad. In the rain. <laughs> yeah, in the rain. It's been a pretty dreary day. Um, so, your big release is the Gold Life set. How... Are you, uh, how happy are you about yourself? I, it's, um, it's been a long time coming. The, uh, I've been pushing to do my own Dunny series for years. And uh, this one had actually been on the drawing board in a couple different variations for about three or four years. Wow. Um, and then finally got it up and going. It took about Probably this set probably took about a year and a half to get to market. So it's been a long time coming and I'm really happy with it. And I don't think I could ask for a better response. Like people are just really like it. Yeah, there's been a lot of buzz for the set. And I think Brian posted that um, this would be the third of all of Kid Robot history, that it's like a solo production. Like in terms of like a set, there's been yeah. like one artist. Dalek did one early on. Dalek and I think and Horvath. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's pretty big, right? Yeah. It's a big honor. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I've just, and I like working with the Dunny form. I've done tons of eight inches, and I just I really wanted to populate. I wanted to see a whole bunch of them. I wanted to see populate a whole bunch of three inch ones. I mean, yeah, my inspiration for doing this is just that's what I wanted. <laughs> that's uh -huh. what I wanted to play with. I wanted to see on my shelf. So. And you chose um, Gold Life, your yeah. theme of uh, Japanese old style. And, uh, yeah, I mean, armor and myth and samurai and ninjas and geisha and the mythology that backs that and the history and um, I've always been inspired by that and uh, just kind of comes together and I put my own little twist on it with different um, it doesn't stick necessarily to uh, an exact history. There's, I take a lot of embellishments and change a lot of stuff around. Well, that's what art is for. <laughs> so it's kind of my take on it. That's cool. And you mentioned eight inches earlier, and I was admiring this eight-inch skull head of yours that you actually put the the death uh, symbol in the front, and you made it crossbones in the back. And it's got these awesome red and white vertical stripes. So can you tell me a little bit about that piece? It's from earlier this year. It's not like... The, the skull head, the character, was something I did originally probably about 10 years ago. It was just a doodle sitting on my artboard for... And it probably sat there just as a skull for about <laughs> six months. It just sat there. <laughs> and at some point I was like, he needs a body, and uh, did this red and white striped suit and big chunky boots, and um, it was kind of inspired by um, recent travels through Japan and seeing some of the nutty um, street fashion, um, Harajuku, and yeah. just just nutty stuff, and it was... Um, that came right over and into the character and my style at the time. So that character's been around in that in that suit for a while, and I've done different variations of them, and over the years built a whole history to them. And uh, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. You must be proud of him of your. I, yeah, I like him. He's he's iconic. He's yeah, something definitely. that people identify with me. And yeah, yeah, I'm tattooed to your neck. There. Yeah. <laughs> There's something about it that's. And I can't quite put my finger on it, but there's something about the, the overall, just the image of it, that's just like, it really gets people's attention. And that personality. Yeah. So, um, yeah. There we go. So how about, okay, we talked about what you've been doing recently. What about any future projects that you have? Um, the can big, you talk about it? Can we get a scoop? I, <laughs> there's, I can talk about some things. Okay. Um, on November 10th, I have a big solo show in L.A. And after I get back from this, that's what I'm focusing on for the next month and a half, two months. I've been, it's been in the works for a few years now. Um, it's on November 10th. The show is 11-10. Um, there's going to be my book release and exclusive colorway of the little two-pack. We're uh -huh. going to do another colorway. 
And then there will be a retrospective of a lot of my work over the last, I don't know, five plus years. And then there will be a whole bunch of new stuff. Wow. And uh, I'm really trying to make it just really fun and different and fresh. And uh, that's what I'm focusing on right now. And then there's, of course, a whole bunch of other toys that are going to be coming out over the next Right. Six, nine, twelve months indefinite. So, yeah, that sounds great. Um, I think the most recent toy I can think of doesn't even go like with this theme. I'm in the way I see it. It's like I think you're doing what the zombie yeah. dunnies was that you, right? Yeah, the grandfather and uh, grand grandpa McGrizzled <laughs> and <laughs> the zombie union. Those are absolutely hilarious and adorable. I have to say. Um, okay, so then. To kind of close, I have kind of a, I call it my oddball question, but it's really just a serious question about how you feel about like the vinyl industry in general, where you think it, it's, it is or it's going or where you want it to go. If you have any commentary on yeah. that. It's, uh, that's, it's a very interesting point that we're at right now. Um, I've watched it go from absolutely zero um, Western toy companies when the only stuff was coming out of Hong Kong or Japan mm -hmm. um, and I've watched it grow from the early days and it kind of blew up and there was a lot of toy companies that jumped in they were businessmen they just saw money they saw dollar signs and I've watched it explode it, it's been a, it was a really fun journey, or it still is a really fun journey, I should say. Um, but I watched it explode. And I, I've seen it, tons of toy companies saturated the market, and along with that, you got a lot of crap. Mm -hmm. You got a lot of people just making stuff that people weren't buying, and so as it exploded, so did our economy, and so people don't have expendable income, and they haven't had it for the last couple of years. People have been really tight with their money. And that toy scene um, here in the U.S. has really, really downsized in a very positive way. Uh -huh. it's, it's filtered out a lot of the crap. It's filtered out a lot of the companies that were in it for the wrong reasons or just couldn't keep their head above water. Um, and along with this, some artists have been kind of shafted in the process, un yeah, unfortunately. Um, but. I've noticed over the last probably six months, nine months, and maybe it's just a very optimistic um, feeling for the overall economy of the world as well as the U.S., but there seems to be a resurgence, and it's a, the toy market seems to be a lot more focused. Everything that's coming out seems to be really good, um, and I've seen that <laughs> in, in production toys and also in the custom scene, the people that are hand-making it and the artists that are doing it. I'm seeing stuff by some guys out there that are, and girls, that are just, I, I, I'm really inspired by my peers and the people that are around me and what's coming out there. So you took a really positive outlook to the whole situation because somebody else might have said that, well, because of the oversaturation with the toy market and the blowing up with the economy that art was devalued. That's probably the pessimistic or the negative yeah. way to look at it. I think if you had asked somebody 12 months ago, and you actually maybe today, you would still get a very kind of pessimistic view on it. And there's a lot of people that, um, that it, it's burned. It, there's been a lot of people that have been cut by what happened and the state of things. But I've, I think it's been really filtered out a lot of the crap. It's been really focused and fine-tuned. And I really see some really awesome new art coming out, and uh, it's inspiring. And it, and that gives me hope. I've never lost hope. You know, it's well, like obviously it, you've had a very positive outlook over the, on the whole thing. You know, it's it's kind of like that whole punk is dead. Punk uh -huh. has died a thousand times over. <laughs> and I've never felt that the toy scene was dying. Me personally, I've always just been, no, I, I just keep doing what I enjoy doing. There's no, I've heard a lot of the cries of, oh, this sucks or that sucks and it's no good. Just kept on going. And, uh, and just, and I've just had confidence. It's not even That's confidence. Good. I just felt that it's going to... It's never going to go out of style yeah. because there's always going to be people who appreciate artwork in, in all its different forms. So I'm glad that you're one of them with the positive <laughs> outlooks in life and vinyl and happiness. So yeah. uh, thank you so much for taking the time thank to you. talk with us. Did, is there anything else you wanted to add? Mm, no. Nope. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, then. I hope you have a great night. And thanks again. Thank you.